Thank you. If, if you guys, uh, for those who have physical Bibles, if you can open Matthew chapter 25, for those who don't, you know, don't, worry, don't sweat it about your phone. You can, I'll have it on the screen. But uh, to be honest, I, 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 for, for talks like this, I usually don't like say, hey, let's read this whole passage and digest it all together. But I felt compelled as like one of the things I want all of us to get out of this week is like, or this weekend, is how I can find my worth, my identity, and tactics for me to move forward as a man of God through, through, through his word. Like, so I, I know it sounds elementary, but the application of it, for us to find edification as men, like, I, I feel like we need to, like, prioritize that and just go and, you, and prioritize the fundamentals of us finding life in his word. So, with that being said, Matthew chapter 25. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Let me say the background context first. Many of us know there, there are four records of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four unique personalities, four unique gifts, um, it, which is a reminder for us that we're all unique and different. So they all had a different style of writing. So you have Matthew, uh, what was his name before Matthew, by the way? Levi, very good. So Matthew um, was very good at writing and capturing um, many parables in which Jesus wrote. Like he would, like he would just sit there one day, and Matthew just kept on writing, writing, and writing all the different parables he heard that, that that Jesus gave. What are parables, by the way? Like, how would you describe it? If I'm, you know, I, I'm not part of the Christian world of you, and I hear that Jesus said a lot of parables. How would you describe it to me? Stories with a meaning. Okay, very good. Stories with a meaning. It's it's an analogy. It's 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 painting a picture. And the, and, the, and why did Jesus love to communicate in parables so much? Because you it's so packed. Like you can unpack it and and gain so many things from all the different layers as you kind of digest it time and time again. So there's so much in there. So that's why like the best way for him to communicate was a parable. And he would use a lot of examples that captured the emotions of his audience. He would use agricultural examples. He would use things about things that could relate to them. That way he would capture their attention. So he knew how to communicate and he knew how to capture their attention. So this is where we're going to pick up uh, in, in a series of parables that what Jesus gave. I want us to highlight one, which I feel is very applicable to us as men. As we answer this question, why on earth am I here? Okay, perfect. There is this great battle, which is overwhelming and daunting, and, like, I don't feel super encouraged to, like, go get him tiger of, of me to go get t tackle this battle. Like, it's overwhelming. Like, why am I here? Like, why am I putting this battle in the first place? Like, couldn't Jesus make it e easier and just remove some of these, these hardships and trials and this weight that's on me? Like, why am I here? What's my purpose of dealing all of this? Like, w couldn't he make it a little bit smoother? What's the end goal of all of this? Matthew chapter five, uh, 25, sorry, Matthew chapter 25, starting from verse 14. For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven, is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. So he's wanting to paint a picture of what eternity is, what his throne is, what kingdom of heaven is. So he paints this picture. It is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. So an, a, a, an owner gives some of his servants some of his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ab ability, and immediately he went on a journey. An owner is entrusting his goods and giving it and loaning it to his servants. But each one with a unique amount and, and, and diverse gifts. You and I have been entrusted with a certain personality, with a certain background, with a certain upbringing, with certain gifts and, and, and that are unique to you. Like there's things that are unique to, to you which I don't have and vice versa. And, he's, and, and here is this owner giving it to his servants, saying, I'm trusting you with this according to who you are. I'm giving each one a, 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 you know, a certain amount of, of, of talents or gifts for them to hold on to and do something with. And we'll see what Jesus continues with this parable. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Like he had five of some item. He, he d did something and was able to gain five more. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. 
After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. So what, what is the guy saying? Saying, look, see, you gave me five, but see, I didn't just like hold on to it and say, this is mine, 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 or I didn't like push it to the side and say, whatever, these are five, you know, this is $5 cash, I don't care. No, I took it and I invested it and I was able to produce five more. Look, I doubled what you gave me. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. What made his master so proud of him is that he took what he has been entrusted with and he honored it and he, and he, and he took what he had to loan and he was able to make an impact more than what he was originally given. So what was his response of his proud father? Well done. Good and faithful servant. I give you X amount. Man, you were able to double that. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Person X, he gave a certain amount. He did more that he, he, he was able to allow that to grow, well done. Someone has another unique gift, he was able to make more of an impact through that, and, and another impact, well done. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. What is this servant saying? God, yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm good at something. I'm sure I have some value. I'm sure I, it, there's something good that you gave me. Like I see it in everyone else. This guy's really good at this, and I see this guy really at work is doing awesome at this, and my wife is like this, but I'm not like that. Sure, I'm sure I am good at something, but you know what? I, I just kept it to myself, whatever that is that you gave me, and I did nothing with it. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. <laughs> He's called, you're lazy. Like you, you kept what I have given you and thinking it just for yourself or that you can belittle it and just put it aside. That's laziness. That's passivity. You've missed the mark of what you are intended to be, and you, you missed the mark on what you are intended to, to, to and, in which I have designed you to be. So, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. So to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not ha have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping, and gnashing of teeth. Why on earth are we talking about this? Why are we opening with this analogy, with this parable in which Jesus gave? As we come full circle, you and I cannot fight the battles in front of us. You and I cannot step up to the plate of the responsibilities of who we are as men unless we know our worth, unless we know our value. Unless we know the talents in which we have been entrusted with. We are renting a certain personality, a certain body, certain gifts, a certain purpose. Certain doors have opened for every single one of us that are unique to you and that are unique to me. But unless I see it in the way God has, has made clear to me, unless I see my worth and value in which he has called me to have, how on earth am I able to move forward and fight the battles in front of me? Unless I know my value, unless I know my worth. You and I are unable to lead others unless we're able to lead ourselves. And that begins of us knowing our identity, our purpose. You and I want to hear on our last breath the words, well done, good and faithful servant. What you and I have is not our own. What you and I have is not our own. Nothing I have is mine. Nothing you have is yours. We are all loaning it. It's not my whatever, like... This is not my job. You've been entrusted with it. You did not, like, 
people have helped you to get to where you are. Nothing is yours. Nothing is mine. My kid is not mine. I have been, uh, yes, it's mine, but I'm saying, I, I'm not like, I have been entrusted w w with, with a human being. For my edification, I have a role for her, her, for her salvation, for her edification, for her purpose in the temporal world. But she's not mine, mine. My ministry is not mine. I have been entrusted with something. And I give it back to him. I'm loaning it, and I give it back to him. But for those who serve, it's not your service. No, you're entrusted with something. Your marriage. This, your, 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 this is for your edification. Can we get to the point where we can say the words of Job? The Lord has given, the Lord can take it away. Blessed be his name. He has given, he can take it away. It's not mine. I'm holding on to everything very lightly, very loosely, because nothing I have is really mine. But I want us to know our value, our worth, that what we have has been given to us from above, and I have a, I have a purpose. I have, I, have a, I have a task at hand to know that I have been loaned with something, and I need to give it back to others. If I give you, if I invite you to my house to, uh, to clean, which I, I would never, but I'm just saying. If I ask you, I need, I need your help to clean my house, and I give you a broom, and then you ask me, okay, thank you, Father Nate, should I, you know, should I mow the lawn? If I give you a broom, then you should know what to do with the broom. So ask yourself, what gifts are that you have for those who are buried? Ask your spouse, ask your wife, what gifts do you see in me? If you're unable to see your gifts, it's not a prideful thing to say, I'm gifted in X, Y, Z. No, if you know that you have been entrusted with it, then you should take pride in knowing that I have been, I'm loaning this gift and I need to give it back. I've given this, so I need to be able to make sure I leave a generational impact through the gifts I have been given. But if I belittle it, I put it aside, or I think it's nothing, I'm insulting the one who has given it to me. Like if I give you, I, I'm, I'm really bad at thinking of good examples, but if I give you, if I give you a, like a, a 24, ki what? give me one. A what? A okay, I give you a college scholarship. I give you a college scholarship. Thank you. That's a perfect one. And, you, and, I, and, and I give you one. A full ride. And you're like, whatever. And you throw it aside. You're insulting me. You're insulting me. Like, you're, you're probably nice to my face. <laughs> Thank you. It's very sweet of you. Thank you. We well, shouldn't have. And you put it aside. You're insulting me. You're insulting me. So you have certain gifts that are unique to you. But for you to push it aside, or better yet, you don't even try to discover what that is. You are insulting your heavenly father. You are insulting him. But he has, he, like, he has declared that he has beautifully threaded you together in your mother's womb, as, we, as King David says. That your heavenly father has threaded you perfectly together in a very unique way, with a certain personality, with certain gifts. Before you were even a speck in your, in your in, 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 like, God has threaded you together with unique personality and unique gifts. But it's for us to discover that. And for us to, 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 to leave that and put that out to lead others and ourselves as men. You cannot lead anyone unless you know how to lead yourself. I came across this nice quote by St. John Chris Hostum. God loves us more than a father, a mother, a friend, or anyone else could love and even more than we are able to love ourselves. Like, I don't want to sound cliche, but do you know, regardless of our mistakes and our past and our, the way maybe we view our worth, regardless of any of that, your heavenly father says, I love you. Actually, I like you. And I'm wanting to do amazing things through you. Nothing that you have in your mind really does not label you other than my love for you. Nothing, nothing defines you more than the way I love you. And my love for you transcends any view that you might have in your logic as far as what love is. And nothing you can do can take that away. I'm wanting to do amazing things through you, but I want you to know that I love you and I want to do amazing things through you. I want us to say, these two, I have all the marching statements, but I want these to be like wrapped in our heart. I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. 
We live in a culture that we feel that I need to do everything that makes me feel good. I'm going to do this because it makes me feel good. This, I'm going to use this outlet, even though it's probably not the best. I am going to drink, smoke, whatever. I'm going to do this because it makes me feel good about myself. Believe it or not, there's worse things in this world than making yourself feel good about yourself. Like, that's not the end goal. The bar is not, I want to feel good about myself. That's not what it should be. Sometimes we fall into the enemy's trap of deception. I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. Our goal as men is to pursue truth. The truth said that I love you. The truth said I'm wanting to do amazing things through you. But I will not lie to myself, even when the truth makes me feel bad about myself. Sometimes we need to embrace the task at hand, know my worth, know my value, and not to avoid, and to avoid falling into deception. Second marching statement. I will prioritize what I value over what I want now. I will prioritize what I value over what I want now. If it, one of the things I want us to get out of, of this conference, what do you value? Like, what do you value? What, what's valuable to you? Like, what do you feel you have been entrusted with? We, I want us to get to a point, I will prioritize what I value over what I want now. There are going to be some traps that, that makes it seem like, yeah, I want to do this, but what do I really value? What have I been entrusted with? How do I view myself? What determines how I view myself? Is it my past? Is it what this person said about me? Or it's what my heavenly father said about me? And I cannot give you that answer. I can tell you, I can tell you until my, uh, my face is blue of how much you are worthy and value in God's eyes. But that, cannot, I, that might speak to your head. But the only for it to get to your heart is the fortress of quiet time. I cannot emphasize that enough. Like that, it only can come from here in your quiet time with your heavenly father. Us being sons of the king, if we understand we're royalty, everything trickles down from that. Everything trickles down from that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But like at every funeral, you begin to, when everyone you know, gives the eulogy and, and says something nice about that person, you begin to think. What are people going to say about me? <laughs> and, and there's a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the tactics, one of the seven habits, is to think of the end in mind. Think of the end in mind. Hopefully these are not overwhelming words. Have you thought about your legacy? What is your legacy as a man? The decisions we make today impact tomorrow. What we talked about earlier, that's wisdom. But our legacy, the impact that we make on this generation and the generation next comes from the, the micro decisions that we make every day. The decision that you make Monday morning of spending quiet time with God, that is a micro decision that's part of your legacy. But think of what you have been entrusted with. Think of who says your value. Think of the one who says, you are my son, and nothing can change that. Embrace that and let it go from head to heart and think of your legacy. The value of life is always determined by how much was given away. Right? I mean, isn't that kind of a common thing most people say about when someone passes? The value of life is always determined by how much was given away. Our responsibility, our marching orders as men, Yes, it begins of knowing how much of God's grace works through our weakness. That nothing can shake that. Nothing will shatter how much I am liked by him. It doesn't matter what I do, successful or not, failure or not. Nothing will change that. Nothing, like nothing, nothing, nothing will change that. But the value of what we do moving forward as us being a light put on top of a hill, our mission as Orthodox men moving forward, that value is determined by how much we give and push that unconditional sacrificial love to others. I added this point in the past hour. Many of you have shared, like, you know, I, I want to know in my heart how much I am loved by him. I want to know my identity is in him, period. 
not at me chasing the next promotion, not me chasing this girl, me not chasing me trying to run away from God. No, I want to just know what he says about me. Yes, that's quiet time. But in addition to that, for those who are looking for a book, the book I, I mentioned that I, I mentioned to, to Randy who passed away, Hind's Feet on High Places. That's the name of the book. Hind's Feet on High Places. Let us pursue our legacy, not in a prideful way. Let us pursue our legacy of saying, I have been entrusted right now, and this time in world history, with certain gifts in which I have, I am renting these gifts, and I'm loaning it. And I know my value and my worth comes from what I am as being a son of royalty, being a son of the king. And I'm wanting out of my love that, that vertical love that, he, that I get from him, it is my responsibility now to push that horizontally in my marriages, in my house, into extended family members in which I can't even stand to be around. That is our responsibility. That's our ethic that we are called to be as Orthodox men. The value of life is always determined by how much was given away. Let us push that love to others and for us to lead of who we are intended to be as men. But first, let that sit, on the, the backdrop of that being, knowing our value and our purpose is from him. And every single one of us, if you realize it or not, has been perfectly packaged with amazing gifts and personality that are unique to you. And you are called to give that to someone else. You have no idea the impact you're able to make to someone else. You are here for a specific purpose. And we want to reach the point where we can hear in the words of Jesus, well done, good and faithful servant. I have given you a couple of talents, gifts, and you were able to do amazing things through that. And you're able to make an impact on others. Enter into the joy of your Lord. To him be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this point, you guys know the drill. We'll we'll spend five minutes in quiet time. It's one fifteen, so we'll open it up for questions. If you have questions, get them ready in your mind, or you can write them on, on a piece of paper. <laughs>